Good evening, everyone. My name is Rusty Berg. I'm coming to you from here somewhere in the frosty and snowy section of southeastern Michigan. Welcome back to the Antique Automotive Acres. I know it's been a very long time since I've posted a video. I apologize for that. Um, life has been very busy uh, with my work commitments and with uh, exciting developments uh, here in the shop with uh, the fleet of antique cars. You might notice that uh, right over my shoulder here is Eleanor, my 1914 Studebaker. You, where I left off was rebuilding the water pump and getting her ready for a meet in uh, South Bend in May of 2022. Check your local listings. It's now February of 2023. Things have happened, specifically a situation that you can kind of see here, but you can't see, which is that the wheel is no longer here, um, and it should be. Unfortunately, the wheel fell off, so I'd like to give you a little bit of an update of where things are with the car, where things are going with uh, the antique automotive acres themselves, and uh, start working to get Eleanor back on the road again. So with that, let's go ahead and get things started. So easier to deploy the handheld to kind of explain and show the situation that happens. So uh, what you can see here, and for those who might have seen it on Instagram, at RustyJazz1938, um, I had Eleanor out, uh, would have been back in June of 22, doing a test run when unfortunately a disastrous occurrence happened when the spindle holding the driver's side front wheel snapped clean off while driving at 25 miles an hour. I'll give that a zero out of 10. Don't recommend going that through that one. Uh, in all honesty, I'm very lucky to be alive and be here. Uh, spindle snaps are not common with these cars uh, and they're not common in a lot of these antique cars, but when they do happen, they usually end up being uh, very detrimental to the passenger inside these cars. You got to remember these cars were not designed with modern safety equivalents in mind. So I am very lucky to be here. I had plans to take this car on a very busy road the next day, a paved road, uh, which I think if it had happened uh, at that time, I probably would have flipped the car and would not be here making the video right now to share with all of y'all. So, um, pivoting back to take a look at some of the carnage again. What saved me was I was on a dirt road, and I'll post a picture up uh, over my voice right now. Whoosh, picture comes up. Uh, showing that uh, where Eleanor ended up. I don't remember all the details of the uh, of the accident. In all honesty, it's a bit of a little bit of a traumatic experience. But what you can see here is when the wheel separated, the car dug down into the dirt, and that's what slowed me down and really saved me. Um, but what you can see here was the spindle itself, clean fracture. Well, not really a clean fracture, but probably had a micro fracture to it. And this is like that classic experiment of work hardening until it finally snapped and failed. So you can see the dirt here indicates there would have been a crack in the spindle. Could have been there for 60, 70, 80 years. I'll never know. Uh, I don't know all the history of Eleanor the car herself, so could have been in an accident and cracked then. Um, but uh, the damage was done. Uh, the crack propagated and finally... Uh, after enough time, it worked hard to the point where it snapped. Suddenly, not a fun experience. Again, uh, you can see the car took surprisingly little damage. There is some sheet metal stuff that ended up happening when the wheel exited. Um, honestly, this sheet metal fender wasn't in the greatest shape to begin with, uh, but we'll get it straightened back out again as part of getting her back on the road. Uh, you can see some damage here. I hope you can see it's a little dark in the uh, garage I'm storing her in right now uh, But you can see the fender brace rod here is separated from the running board um, So we'll have to get that all kind of straightened back out again, but 
Um, really, the biggest part of the problem of trying to fix uh, Eleanor here has been locating a replacement. Uh, these were a two-year only part. Um, and unfortunately, they made changes in 1916 that I could have used, but I would have had to have found a complete set and a complete set of hubs to go with it uh, and would have required some machining otherwise to adapt. Um, but good news, I have found a replacement. So now it's time to get back to getting Eleanor back together again. Um, let me see if I can take you over so you can see some of the aftermath as well. You'll have to excuse me as I move things around a bit. Uh, you can see this is sort of the storage area. I needed to get Eleanor on the lift itself. So there was a project to actually even just make these extensions here to get her lifted and supported. You know, modern lifts like this were not designed to hold antique cars and the antique cars were not designed to be lifted like they are, uh, like our modern cars are. So this was, some, this was a, a machining project I went through to actually make these threaded extensions to help support the car uh, so that I could actually get her up in the air and get back to working on her. But what you can see over here is these are the front wheels. So this is the passenger wheel. And then this is the captain's side, the driver's side wheel. This is the one that exited the car in a not graceful manner. Let me pan you down. You can see right there, there's the rest of the spindle. It's still in there. I haven't gotten around to pulling it out yet. So this is what separated and uh, well, sent me for a bit of a wild ride. Unfortunately, you can see here, this is, this is not good. Um, the spindle took some damage when it when it fell off not surprising really uh, you know they're not designed to exit uh, in a surprising fashion like that but it's something i've been putting off but the next part of the project here is i have to get let me pan you back the other way pan you back up again um i need to take these real wheels off of the car as well you can see this is all the dirt from the road that she slid around in uh literally once I got to the side of the road, uh, had some help from my folks, came out, we loaded her on a trailer and I moved her in here and she's been sitting waiting patient, patiently for me to get her back up and roadworthy again. Uh, and one of those things is I got to take these wheels off with the damage on the driver's side wheel and the fact that these are all still in their relatively original condition. I actually need to take these wheels off and take them down to Ohio to an Amish uh, wheelwright to get them redone. Um, because at this point, with the damage, again here on the driver's side wheel, this is not safe to run on anymore. But you can see the long grain shag bar hickory that this would have been made out of. These are very strong, but when they're compromised like this, they're not safe to run on. And there's no sense in doing just one when you got all of them. So I'll be taking these wheels off and uh, pan you back up again. Bring the back around. I'll be taking the wheels off of the car and uh, loading them up. I've got about a week to get them off and get them disassembled and ready for uh, the wheelwright to start putting them back together again. Uh, with that, we'll take you out to the shop so I can show you the uh, new part I found. Well, <laughs> the new part in its case <laughs> uh, that I have to take apart uh, so that I can get Eleanor back up on the road again. You might recognize this sign. We're back out in the shop. Uh, let me pan a bit because I'm craning my neck up. There we go. We're back out in the shop and uh, I'm here to show you what's behind me over my shoulder. This is my replacement spindle. Actually, it's a parts car that has the replacement spindle I'm looking for. So let's take a little bit of a walk around here. This is what remains of a 1915 Studebaker four cylinder. So I mentioned the spindle was a two year only part. It's a 14 and 15 use that particular part number based on my review of the parts books. And uh, I have to give a, a big shout out of thanks to my friend Jaron uh, who cued me in that this car was for sale because I had been looking for a couple months trying to find a replacement spindle and uh, there have been a lot of these cars coming up for sale but they're all nice 
restored examples. This car is a little bit too far gone. Uh, it is missing a fair amount of parts that you would need to get it back together. However, it has parts I need and it has parts I can use on Eleanor in the case of failure. One of them being uh, this wonderful kind of dirty looking thing, but that is actually the transaxle out of the rear of the car. So this is the transmission case. These are made out of aluminum and they are known if they go you're in big trouble if they crack or something like this so this is going to be a fine part to have sitting on the shelf uh, there's a lot of other chassis parts i can use from this car but as you can see it's as it was delivered to me uh, from of all places washington state and uh for those doing numbers at home i paid more to ship this car from washington to michigan than i did actually buying it but it was worth it because of what it has right here inside there is a complete spindle assembly in good looking condition. I need to take it apart, get it magnafluxed and checked, but uh, this is my prime choice to get Eleanor back on the road again. You can see it's got the, uh, the complete pin and bushing assembly. I'll have to make new bushings for that. I actually made drawings on what the bushings need to look like, so uh, I'll be able to turn those pretty easily on the old vintage 1911 Hendy Lay, but uh, there it is. So this car, I will be stripping this car apart and putting parts on the shelf. If anybody is looking for something from a 15 Studebaker, uh, feel free to reach out to me and uh, maybe we can see if I can help you out because uh, there are some unique differences between the 15 and the 14. One of them being, uh, when you remember, Eleanor has an integrally cast exhaust manifold. In 1915, they went to this separately cast manifold. Um, so the engine's slightly different, but the internals remain remarkably the same. So I have all these parts that I'll be able to use uh, in case something else breaks on Eleanor. Not that I'm planning on having anything break anytime soon, to be honest, but parts is parts. I've got the space to store them, so this car, I will start stripping this down uh, and get her... Uh, get it stripped apart and get the parts I need specifically the spindle out of here and get them ready to be checked make sure they're usable because um going forward if I'm ever doing front axle work on any of my antique cars one of the first things I'm going to be doing is sending the spindles off to a no a good machine shop they'll have a machine called a magnafluxer which is a device that they can actually uh they use a, a metallic powder and a powerful electromagnet that they will uh, uh, they sprinkle the powder on there, and with the electromagnet, it'll uh, the powder will deposit in cracks that you can't see, and the powder is bright enough that you can recognize that there might be a crack that's not visible to the uh, the naked eye. So that's a key thing that I'm going to have done to check not only this spindle but the passenger side spindle from El Eleanor, and also this passenger side spindle, and hopefully. I'll be able to get a complete set ready uh, to get Eleanor back on the road again. Well, there you have it, folks. A little bit of a brief introduction and uh, getting you up to speed on what the next projects are going to be uh, uh, here at the Antique Automotive Acres. Um, I figured I'll end the, uh, the intro video here, uh, and then we'll move into uh, the next video where I'll start uh, disassembling the rear axle uh, parts that I need to get the wheels off. Uh, spoiler alert, um, Eleanor is a full floating rear axle, so I actually have to get the axle shafts out all the way and then pull the wheels off the hubs, which hopefully in this garage bay she's in, I've got enough clearance to actually get the whole axle slid out. We're going to find out, and uh, if not, it's going to be a challenge. Uh, so we'll go into that in the next video and start taking it apart. Also, I'll start stripping down that 15 parts car. That's a really nice find for me. Um, again, it was, uh, and I joke about it, about shipping, but uh, you know, these are not the most common cars. So being able to find a really good candidate parts car for me to take apart, that I'm not disassembling some other restorable car, because that one is definitely missing a bunch of driveline pieces and a bunch of interior pieces. It, it would be a very large challenge to get that car back running again. Uh, so the fact that she'll provide pieces to keep this car on the road, I'm happy with that. So 
uh, with that. And it's been <laughs> such a long time. I got to remember all the things that you're supposed to say as a YouTuber to uh, to get people to uh, uh, keep coming back. So uh, if you uh, if you like the video, maybe give it a thumbs up. Feel free to comment in the chat window down there below. Perhaps give the channel a subscription. That's uh, www.antiqueautomotiveacres.com. Uh, thanks again to Hillary for setting me up with that. Uh, and uh, if there's other videos, you can go back and see the history of uh, work that's been done on Eleanor in the past. I go into doing the water pump, making new bushings for that. Um, and I was planning to uh, share some footage of down, uh, being down at South Bend. I'll have to see about putting that together. Maybe I'll sprinkle that in. Uh, somewhere in the video series as I get her back up and running again. Goal is take her back to South Bend. There's a meet in June um, and just to get her back up and running again. There is a show in July that uh, she would be a featured mark at. I'm hopeful to have her running uh, well before that uh, because there's some driving tours involved with that as well. So with that once again um, if you like the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up, comment down below if you have any questions or comments, or if you're looking for 1915 Studebaker parts, put a comment down there below and we'll see if we can make a deal. Um, with that, uh, thank you very much for watching, appreciate it very much, and we'll see you next time.